Hi, it's Ina. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Note for Yourself, where I explore everything related to divination slash tarot as it pertains to both esoteric study and self-discovery. If that sparks your interest, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And yeah, so you never miss a video with that intro out of the way. Um, I was inspired to attempt my own Deacon or Deccan, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, walk uh, on this channel. Granted, I'm super late, but when am I not late? <laughs> Considering we're already halfway through November and uh, the Deacon walk starts in April with Aries. So, yeah, I'm pretty late, but I've really been enjoying Wendy's esoteric breakdowns over at Wendy's Occult Compass. But I particularly wanted to give my Deacon Walk a personal spin. So it's less um, academic and esoteric and it's more personal. Um, so I was inspired by Mixtress Ray. Um, in this in this sense. I really suggest you check both these series out, by the way. I'll link them down. I'll link both their channels down below. Um, Wendy's Occult Compass and Mixer's Ray, of course. And yeah, I really enjoy the way Mixer's Ray has interwoven like personal reflections, commentary into her Deacon walk, you know, sort of like relating the Deacons back to her own life and what they mean to her. I really wanted to do something similar, so today I honestly feel like ranting. <laughs> um, because I'm facing a conundrum of sorts and I just wanted to go off. <laughs> I just wanted to go off. Um, I don't think I'll be saying anything particularly groundbreaking on the subject. Um, so many people have put in their two cents on this topic that, you know, they have, people have written about it, um, even to, on an academic, um, scale. So I don't think I'll be really adding anything to the dialogue. Nonetheless, I need to vent and this is my space to vent. So I'm going to do just that. So. We're looking at the Seven of Cups right now, so we're currently, as I'm filming this, we're just ending the Seven of Cups season, Deacon, whatever you want to call it. And I wanted to go over some of the technical details first before I launch into my rant. Um, so the Seven of... Oh, I was about to say the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven... <laughs> Wait, did I say the Seven of Pentacles before? The Seven of Cups. Um, the Seven of Cups is the third deacon of Scorpio. The last, the third and the last deacon of Scorpio. And it's Venus in Scorpio. So, like all sevens in the tarot, they present a stumbling block on our journey. It's a moment of introspection or reflection on what has transpired up and up until that point a key moment where the path splits and goes in several directions we're no longer the ones being acted on by external forces like in the fives we are the ones acting the ones in the saddle we're given full reign to do whatever we want in the sevens we finally take responsibility for the consequences or fallout of our actions. But how real are the options we are being presented in the Seven of Cups? There's already a sense of illusory success in the Rider Waite Smith depiction with the cups in the clouds, but I like this depiction even more, which is the depiction in the Hayworth Tarot. Because it seems to pull back the curtain on what is essentially smoke and mirrors. 
the promises of wealth, recognition, security, love, they're all revealed to be clouds themselves and you, you, you even get a sense of like this coming from this kind of being a genie in the bottle a situation where all you could ever desire wish for is being revealed to you is being kind of un unleashed from the bottle um yeah with this like trail of smoke or mist or whatever you want to call it they have no substance the, the, the cups have no real substance it's it's air it's smoke it's their clouds and then in the thoth if you're familiar with the thoth you'll know curly is no fan of the sevens so <laughs> this is what the seven of cups looks like in the thoth and we go a step beyond what we see this mirage, if you want to call it that, that we see in the clouds. Um, maybe not even a, a mirage exactly. There's there's a word for it. I think it's the exact terminology is a fata morgana, which is when there's a, a mirrored reflection of a of. I think it's usually it occurs over a body of water, so that the whatever is in the water so if it's a ship it gets reflected in the sky and that's kind of what i think of with this like a fata morgana hi so this is editing me um a fata morgana according to wikipedia is a complex form of superior mirage visible in a narrow band right above the horizon the term fata morgana is an italian translation of morgan the fairy which i assume refers to morgan le fay these mirages are often described as fairy castles in the air or false land conjured by her magic. So that's what I think of when I see the Seventh Cups. But here in the Thoth, um, everything is stripped back and we go a step beyond what we see in the, the Rider Waite Smith. So the clouds have evaporated and it's revealing that the whole thing was a trick, glamours, fairy glamours. So the cups lie in this like pungent, gross, slimy swamp. Um, and it's kind of showing you the ruin that you're sure to face if you pick any of these offerings, right? The, well, this, this, uh, this, my version is in Spanish, but the keyword for the hermetic golden dawn, uh, keyword for the seven of cups is, um, debauchery uh yeah that essentially means uh corruption corruption or hedonism etc so let's look at what crowley has to say on the seven of cups before i continue with this this card refers to the seven netzak in the suit of water here recurs the invariable weakness arising from lack of balance also the card is governed by venus in scorpio her dignity is not good in this sign. One is reminded that Venus is the planet of copper, external splendor and internal corruption. The lotuses have become poisonous, looking like tiger lilies, and instead of water, green slime issues from them and overflows, making the sea a malarious morass. Venus redoubles the influence of the number seven. The cups are iridescent, carrying out the same idea. Essentially, Crowley uses a lot of words to rail against the influence of Venus and Scorpio, uh, which is to say he uses a lot of words to say he hates women. <laughs> that's just very, um, that's just uh, Crowley for you. Anyway, uh, what I want to highlight here specifically is the phrase external splendor, splendor and internal corruption. So... Venus rules the sign Taurus and Libra and is associated with earthly pleasures, desire, the arts and aesthetics. So remember the word aesthetics because it'll become relevant later on. The influence of Scorpio has much to do with power dynamics because of it being ruled by both Mars and Pluto. When you combine the two, an image starts to emerge. Um, one of gaining power through beauty 
beauty and aesthetics as social leverage. Here's what A. Waite has to say about the Seven of Cups. Strange chalices of vision, but the images are more especially those of the fantastic spirit. Divinatory meanings, fairy favours, images of reflection, sentiment, imagination, things seen in the glass of contemplation. Some attainment in these degrees, but nothing permanent or substantial is suggested. Reversed. Desire, will, determination, project. I'm assuming project here as more like project, like projection, not as in a project. Um, but yeah, in it's a, yeah, so it's a weight's description in particular that I'd like to use a jumping off point for my, for my rant. Um, and I don't want this to sound too like sanctimonious or anything. It's just, look, it's just, these are just my feelings, okay? This is my own uh, personal dealings with the issue and I just kind of want to vent about it. So, okay. So, change of scenery. I have some cards here that relate to Venus and Scorpio in some way. So we have both Taurus and Libra, which are ruled by Venus. And then we have Scorpio and we have we have Taurus and Scorpio combined and Libra and Scorpio combined. So these are kind of intuitive images that are kind of based on the combined energies of these signs and these planets. So yeah, all technical stuff aside, I just wanted to give a, a visual. Yeah, I have a really hard time with uh, social media and yeah, you might be saying, well, who doesn't? Who doesn't have a complicated relationship with social media? But I'd argue some people have a harder time than others. Some people thrive off it, others not so much. It's it's a real problem and yeah, I, I have it. Um, so a low self-esteem, and social media, specifically Instagram, don't mix, or rather they mix too well. Low self-esteem really drives Instagram, for example. And can we talk about FOMO for a minute here? Because I feel like this is something that has been acknowledged in recent conversations on Tarot 2, but isn't really acknowledged truthfully in my opinion i feel like no one wants to admit how much fomo affects them to what degree i think fomo affects all of us to different varying degrees suffer from fomo and i mean this isn't something that is exclusive to exclusive to tarot tube okay um this, this brand is about Instagram, it's not about TaraTube. But I feel like we have to be honest with ourselves and take a look at ourselves, take a hard look at ourselves. And I don't know, just reflect on how much FOMO has influenced our shopping habits, our rates of acquisition of, of decks. I mean, for example, my in my case the reason i started collecting uh decks in the first place uh around two years ago so during the pandemic was because i was introduced to tarot tube uh because for the longest time i just had the ride weight smith and that was it i was aware that other tarot decks existed but i didn't have the impulse to get them until i started watching tarot tube and I'm not blaming TaraTube for my, uh, I guess, my addiction or my choice, you know, my own personal choice to acquire decks. But I can't deny that there's a relationship there, right? There's a correlation and FOMO has a lot to do with it. So 
that's just on tarot tube right and it, it i wouldn't say it has had as much of a negative impact on me as for example instagram has and here's where my conundrum lies so i've gone to the point with my channel where it's probably a good idea to make or well to maintain an instagram for my channel specifically and <laughs> I really don't want to, <laughs> but I feel like I have to. And you might be saying, well, don't, just, just don't. But I kind of have to because as someone who aspires to be a professional, um, work in a professional capacity, kind of have tarot reading as a serious kind of side hustle or main hustle, I, I do need to have like I need to be present on social media and I am present on some platforms like Twitter for my own personal use. I have an Instagram, I have a personal Instagram account, but I haven't, I don't use it. I haven't used it for years. I go on Instagram very sparingly and just to like look at very specific things because as soon as I like as soon as I step foot on that site, so to speak, I am just inundated with shit, <laughs> stuff I don't want to see, uh, stuff that is is bad for me, um, and stuff from it's not even from the people I follow. It's not like I can just turn it off. You know, I want to go to the explore page and just really quickly type in something that I want to look up in a specific account. And I have to be exposed to just an endless barrage of an endless uh, flood of, of, of stuff, of information overload, you know, product placements and algorithmic, an algorithm that understands, you know, what my tastes are what I tend to look at, what I tend to look for. And whenever I'm on Instagram, I feel like I'm, I'm shopping um, or I'm supposed to be shopping. And I don't like that feeling. Um, I mean, that is what Instagram has turned into, right? I, it's not just for me, everyone experiences that, but I just, I can't take it and I can't take the FOMO, I can't take the comparison, endless comparisons. Aesthetics really play into this as well, that's why I mentioned the aesthetics of Venus. I just, like, I can't, right, I have like, I have a really low self-esteem and it just really affects me. I I can't deal with it. I can't deal with the fallout of just going on Instagram for even just a few minutes because again, I just I can't seem to avoid these I can't seem to avoid exposure to all the stuff that just makes me it's just engineered to make me feel like shit. It's engineered to make you or anyone feel like shit feel deficient in some way so that you purchase whatever it is they're trying to sell you and you know it's it's not the same thing on tarot tube i feel like there is fomo but it's not the same but instagram is all about fomo and to be honest i don't even use my personal account because again like I said, I don't want to be exposed to that and I kind of don't care. And I mean this in the in the nicest way possible. I don't care what my friends are up to. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I feel like it, it feels like a breach of privacy. I, I feel like I, I almost feel like I shouldn't be seeing that, right? I shouldn't be seeing all of that and... I'd rather just talk to the person 
in person and and find out about how like talk to them just have one-on-one -on -one contact find out what they're up to I don't I don't want to see that because it, it makes me feel bad and it's not their fault but Instagram is kind of built on the premise of putting your best face forward you know living your best life I can't exactly blame people for wanting to participate in the aesthetics of presenting an image that is is visually pleasing to look at um no one wants to post you know ugly shit <laughs> that's what it boils down to right venus in in venus uh, in general and venus in scorpio the aesthetics no one wants to post ugly shit it is ultimately up to you what you post and i i get that not everyone is like this on instagram but I don't know, I'm just scared. I'm just scared that I'm gonna have the same experience I have, I've had on my personal account with my tarot Instagram. I, I get the sense that I won't if I only follow tarot accounts on my tarot Instagram. <laughs> But I still, I'm still gonna get that sense of FOMO, right? Because I, I still get it. Um, with you know, not having, I have decks on my wish list that I've organically decided that I want, not through seeing someone else have them, but because I want them. I've found them myself. But there are a lot of decks that I can't have known about. I wouldn't have known about if it weren't for Tarot Tube. And they also, they're decks that call to me. I'm very picky about the decks that come into my collection. Um, but also, I don't have the means to be buying shit all the time. I don't want that to fuel my shopping addiction. I just, like, I have a relatively small collection, which is, in terms of tarot tube, I have... In terms of tarot tube, it's a small collection. I, I have around 40 something decks, which is a small collection in terms of, of yeah, where, where I stand in this community. And that says a lot, don't you think? I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be sanctimonious. I'm not trying to be like holier than thou. But yeah, that's just kind of the, what we've grown accustomed to. And I'm very, very picky with what comes into my collection now. I've I've rehomed decks. I have a few decks in Purgatory because I didn't used to have that. I, I haven't always had that sense of discernment. Um, when I started collecting, I really wasn't picky enough. And of course, I regret that. But, I don't know, I'm rambling. <laughs> I don't want to try to get to here because I kind of came on here thinking I knew what I wanted to say and now I'm just kind of going in different directions and rambling. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just feeling very wary of just overly cautious about, you know, I'm just not feeling it, right? I'm not feeling... Instagram but I, I know I have to like it's just something it's it's a it's something I've decided for myself that I have to do that on a on a certain on a subconscious level I obviously want to do it otherwise I wouldn't even consider it but it's just it's like it, it sets off alarms <laughs> It sets off alarms in my head because I, I don't really know what it's going to do to me. I haven't, like I said, I very, I just don't use Instagram. And even if I just surround myself with tarot accounts, I'm still going to be exposed to other stuff that I don't want to be exposed to because it makes me feel horrible and it sends me down a whole rabbit hole. And I hate that, like a content rabbit hole. That makes me feel bad as well. And it's not anyone's fault. I think we're all in the same boat here, right? We're all just, just 
trying to keep our head above water and we all kind of fallen into this trap of I don't know subconsciously or all consciously comparing ourselves and feeling like you know it's it's almost like it's a trap because we feel like you know um trying to create an aesthetic is 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 a natural impulse right have most people want to make things look pretty presentable and there's nothing wrong with that it's just i think you know it, it just does something to our brains where we get to a point where we feel like that really is um part of our core identity and it's it is and it isn't so we get to a point where we can't really distinguish ourselves what is reality and what isn't and then even with ourselves we compare ourselves to ourselves <laughs> i have a really harsh inner critic and i don't want to spiral yeah i i don't want to spiral that is one of my main issues i i spiral a lot and that's without instagram so i don't want to have i don't want to be constantly um whipping myself because something doesn't look perfect and that's the ultimate trap i think the ultimate illusion you know castles in the sky things that are gonna appear on people's feeds for like maybe a few hours and then they're gonna disappear and okay they'll still be on your own they'll still be on your feed but or timeline or whatever it's called um, on instagram but yeah these things are um ephemera right they're not they're not supposed to last and i mean what am i even saying i don't know <laughs> i've completely gone off on a tangent here and yeah i just oh, look i just needed to vent I need to vent because I'm worried about how this will affect me. I'm resisting it, even though I feel like I need to do it. I kind of just want to hear other people's thoughts on this as well. Yeah, I really want people to chime in. If you disagree, I completely get it. I just, I'd love to hear people's feedback because I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know, maybe I just don't have the emotional capacity to. But I think most of us don't. We're not really built as humans to be bombarded with content all the time and just be bombarded with these images of perfection, that these avatars of perfection that don't really exist, that we ourselves know we're cognizant that they don't exist and yet our brain can't seem to catch up with that idea our brain still experiences it like it's real like this man for example this this person can be conscious is conscious of the fact that these cups are ephemeral that they're in the clouds that they are not real but they're still enraptured by them right I don't know that's the power of venus i guess venus and scorpio yeah i don't know that was really <laughs> i went off on so many tangents i didn't want to script this i like i scripted the first part of this video but i didn't want to script this because i just wanted to be i just wanted to like just speak my thoughts organically and um, I don't know if I did a good job of really expressing what I have on my mind, what worries me. But yeah, I don't, I just don't, I don't like feeling like shit. <laughs> I want this to be a good experience for me. I don't want this to be an experience that drains me. 
yeah for now youtube is 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 good like i haven't gone to the point where i feel like youtube drains me thankfully as i'm still starting out but i'd rather not get to that point and if that means keeping my account small that's fine you know i I don't have huge ambitions. I'm not here to like make it big. Uh, I'm just here to kind of talk with people, get to know people, meet people, you know, have discussions, learn, teach, and hopefully impart some wisdom, <laughs> you know, my own inner wisdom and have fun especially like if I'm not having fun then there's no point to this like the moment I stop having fun is when I think I'll I will stop doing this because yeah there's just nothing I'm gonna be able to get from that anything positive yeah I, I don't know <laughs> So Instagram is the big bad guy, you know? Yeah, again, I don't think I'm saying anything new. I just kind of wanted to come on here to, to uh, vomit, <laughs> just vomit words. And yeah, so um, I guess that's my relationship to the Seven of Cups. Uh, what's your relationship to the Seven of Cups? And what do you think of what I said? Do you agree? Do you disagree? You know, comment down below. And yeah, I just want to, I just want to hear what people think or how people experience or approach Instagram. Are there any ways to avoid this kind of experience? What do you do to avoid this? Like, are there tips, like any, any tricks? Um, so I can make it as comfortable an experience for me as is possible. Yeah, what, what do you think? What do you have? Are you on a lot of like social media platforms or not? Do you stay away from them altogether? Yeah, I just wanna hear your thoughts. And what do you think of FOMO? Like honest, honest opinions be honest with yourself what do you really think of FOMO in the tarot tube community because I, I think it's real I think we need to be honest with ourselves even if we don't think we, we suffer from FOMO the whole reason this community exists well maybe not the only reason but we <clears throat> unintentionally encourage each other to find, discover, purchase decks. And, you know, that's that can be really positive because we can discover decks that we never even, we wouldn't have found through any other means and might be the decks that we've been looking for, you know, that we didn't even know we needed. And that's great, that's positive. But I think it can have a really dark, it can have a dark underbelly, you know, uh, on the consumption side. I think it can be, for some people, more than others. I think it can have a really negative impact. And um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I've, I've rambled on long enough. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know how long I've rambled on for but um yeah so comment down below if this was of any use to you this video I mean <laughs> if it was uh thought-provoking or entertaining or or anything give it a like please because it it helps me out and or you know dislike it I I don't either way <laughs> that's fine with me um both help me out so <laughs> it's up to you um so yeah i think i'm i'm done for today i've i've spoken my 
I've said my piece and yeah so yeah okay bye <laughs>